you, East Chapel family and friends, to the first night of our uh, revival. I should say the first preaching night, because last night some of you were here for our revival prayer walk, uh, even in the rain, and uh, we thank God for that as well. But as we come together uh, for this uh, first night, we want to uh, begin in the way that even we do on Sunday mornings. Praising God from whom all blessings flow. Won't we join together and sing it at us? Those who are here in the sanctuary, those who are joining us online or a conference call, won't you join with us in singing? <laughs>
chapter 16, verses 25 through 34. Again, Acts chapter 16, verses 25 through 34. I'll be reading from the New International Version as you follow along in your translation. Again, Acts chapter 16, verses 25 through 34. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. Verse 28, but Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we are all here. The jailer called for lights and rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. Yes, then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. And at the hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. And then immediately he and all his household were baptized. Verse 34. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. And he was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God and he and his whole household. Let the church say amen for these words of God in Acts chapter 16, 25 through 34. We thank God for you uh, tonight for logging on and worshiping with us uh, here at East Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Chesapeake. We are delighted uh, that uh, despite a pandemic, despite world events that have caused many to feel uh, not at ease, uh, despite whatever may have happened in your day today, right. or maybe it's just because of what happened in your, uh, what happened today in your life, that you are here to worship, and we are here for another revival season. Amen. I challenge you as we go forward in this uh, three-day period of revival, uh, of preaching and revival, because our, our bodies need to be revived too, so I say amen. Uh, but as we uh, journey this week, I challenge you to let this be a, a marking point for you. Uh, because as you look at this 23rd uh, day of August uh, of 2021, set a mark and, and pray to God that by his grace and mercy, the 23rd of August of 2022, that you will be stretched spiritually, that you will grow, and that you will have a deeper fellowship with God. I pray that that journey will mark today that you will grow in your Christian walk, in your scriptural reading, in your uh, time alone with God in prayer and fasting, whatever uh, that you need to do to lean more on God and yes. not to your own understanding. Yes. I also pray that as we uh, take this journey that someone that uh, maybe uh, does not know the Lord will come to know him during this service, yes, even virtually. And uh, let me remind you by way of announcements that we will be broadcasting Facebook Live and on conference call uh, both tonight as well as, uh, well, all three nights through Wednesday. Uh, but on Wednesday night, we will also have an outdoor uh, worship service. Now, if something should happen and the heavy rains occur, uh, we will then uh, let you know and we'll post that and get the word 
out by no later than 5 o'clock uh, on Wednesday afternoon. But we're going to pray that uh, we will have a fine time on the outside as we did on Sunday afternoon or Sunday morning. Amen. Uh, tonight, uh, we are welcoming not only uh, those of you who are regular to our fellowship and worship time, but we also are giving a shout out to the family of St. Stephen, African Methodist Episcopal Church in Wilmington, North Carolina. Right. Uh, we're saying hello to you because even virtually you are supporting your pastor. All right. And we thank God uh, for you for doing that. Uh, as we journey tonight, uh, I'm going to do my introductions right now. Then I'm going to, after I finish the introduction of the preacher, I'm going to ask that uh, the choir, uh, that those that are representing the choir and others that are waiting to join us on the outside next, on Wednesday, uh, that they will share in, in a couple of selections as we go forward. But let me just introduce you the way Reverend Nixon said that I should introduce him. Uh, nothing long, he said. So I'll just say what he said. He's been preaching for 40 years as of June, and he's been pastoring for 35 years. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I've already told you he's the pastor of St. Stephen uh, Amy Church in Wilmington. Uh, he's also, uh, his pastors have included churches in both the North Carolina Annual Conference as well as the Western North Carolina Annual Conference. I'm gonna stop right there uh, and let uh, the preacher preach after the selections. Now, I'm going to hold it right there, uh, Reverend Nixon, but I can assure you that uh, on the next couple nights that I'm going to add a little bit more to that introduction. But just so that the record reflects that I did say this pastor preacher of 40 years in ministry and 35 pastors that he will be the revivalist tonight. Won't you pray with them? Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the one that is the revivalist, the preacher for these nights. Oh God, pour your anointing upon him. God, that which you have spoken to him in secret and quiet in his time with you, oh God, we pray that he will proclaim it in a mighty way. We pray for the content organization delivery that everything that he says will be pleasing in your sight and that it will fall on good ground mm. and that it will land and that our souls will be revived yes. and someone will be saved. So hear this, our humble prayer, God. Clear away any distractions yet again, anything that would keep us from hearing what you would have us to know. In Jesus' name, let all God's children say, Amen. 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 Won't you say when we preach, preacher? Preach, preacher. Amen. Come on, choir.
is the safest place you or I could ever be. It is not always a pleasant and pain-free place. I think I need to hit repeat. Although being and living, walking, praising, worshiping in God's presence, in God's assured safety, is a wonderful thing. But every now and then, when you are even in His presence, when you are in His will, Trouble will find your address. Yes, right. Are y'all going to pray with me? Yes, it, it, it really doesn't matter how long you've been in God's will. It doesn't matter how often you read the Bible. You can quote it from Genesis to Revelation. But if you live long enough and serve God long enough, Reverend Sparrow, you will soon discover that being in God's will will also bring enemies your way. Yes, right. Because everybody who is observing you praising God is not always encouraging you. Mm -hmm. Everybody will not always be happy. They will not always be your cheerleader okay. when it comes to praising God. Yeah. Uh, being God's will is secure. Because it lets you know no matter what the enemy says my way, that God has my back. That's right. Uh, it lets me know that no matter what the enemy sets in front of me, no matter how many traps the enemy sets for me, it lets me know that the God whom I serve is able to prepare a table before me yeah. in the very presence of my enemy. Yeah. So I'm saying that. That's right. From trials and tribulations. Right. Although I mean God's will, it does not exempt me from having setbacks and disappointments. Yeah. Although I mean God's will, it does not exempt me yeah. from having some dark days every now and then. Yeah. Although I mean God's will, it does not exempt me from having the rain and the cloud that make the hole on my head. It is a misconception that because you live and walk in the will of God, mm -hmm. that you are to be exempt from the trials of this life. Yes. The word of God says in this life, in this world, you shall have trials and tribulation. But I'm glad, Reverend Sparrow, the writer did not put a period. All right. He put a but. Have his holy conjunction. He put a but said, hold on, there's something that's coming. He put a but, you know the but lets you know that no matter what came behind the but, the but that leaves what came behind it, the word is saying, in this world you shall have trials and tribulation. But be of good cheer, but Lord, I have overcome the world. It lets me know that because I'm a child of the king, I'm not
when the enemy came, when the demon came out of her, everybody would have been giving God praise for her deliverance. But the words that everybody did not give her praise. So you ought not be surprised when everybody is not rejoicing with you. You ought not be surprised when you are raising your hand and everybody is looking at you cross eyed. You ought not be surprised when you are on your feet dancing for joy because you had a flashback to where God brought you from. You had a flashback to what God did for you. You had a flashback to what God saved you from. You had a flashback to what God delivered you from. And when you were in a day of his goodness, you ought to go ahead and have a flashback. You ought to go ahead and look back over your life and see where God brought you from. And when you think about it, you ought to go ahead and give God praise. They, they got upset because Paul spoke a word of deliverance yes, mm -hmm. into her spirit. Yes. And the word says she was set free. Yes. Mm -hmm. Paul and Silas was messing up her, their, the hustle. Mm -hmm. They were messing up the weekly deposit. That's right. yes, yes. They were no longer getting rich on this person, this lady, yeah. she is saved mm -hmm. and now following Paul and Silas. But not just following Paul and Silas, but she's worshiping mm -hmm. the God who saved and delivered her. Yeah. So now the folk are upset. We got to do something with these two creatures from the countless because they're messing up things in town. They're messing up things in Chesapeake, Virginia. They're messing up stuff in women in North Carolina. We must put them in jail. Can I tell you when you serve God for real, the enemy will try to steal your job. The enemy will try to put you in a mental prison. The enemy will try to lock you up. The word says he put them in yeah, yeah. Put him in prison. They are locked up in prison. I'm almost finished. They are locked up in prison. They are locked up in prison. But the word says at midnight. Yeah. Midnight. 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 The darkest part of the night at midnight. Uh -huh. People write songs about midnight. What sisters talk about? At midnight at the oasis. Will mm -hmm. Brother Piggy say, I'm going to wait till the midnight hour. That's right. And while everybody else was trying to get on the morning train, last night, a girl in the pit said, We're waiting for the midnight train in Georgia. There's something about midnight. But at midnight, at midnight, the word says that Paul and Silas, they prayed. Unto God. Yeah. Look at what they did not do. They did not get upset with the preacher for not coming to visit them. Mm -hmm. They did not get upset with the members, the lay, the missionaries, or the officers for not coming to visit them. Uh -huh. They did not get upset that the that Justin Jackson or Al Sharpton or members of a black eyes matter did not come and pick it and protest outside of their jail. They did not get upset with anybody. They did not have a pity party. I was not there, but look at you, my sanctified imagination. Just maybe they had a conversation with each other. Just maybe they just began to talk and reflect on what God had done for them. Your team talks about being together, serving for God's glory. Midnight. Yes, sir. Yes. 
Paul and Silas, they prayed and offered praises unto God. Yeah. First thing I want to drop to your spirit is, what was it that made Paul and Silas not go bitter in their situation? First thing I want to suggest to you that it was their faith in God That's right. that assured them that God was still in them. Mm -hmm. you, you can't get the type of faith that will assure you that God is still able just by showing up once a month, uh -huh. once a week. Okay. The only way you get the type of faith that Paul and Silas had, you must walk the floor at midnight some. You, you got to shed some tears. You got to call on his name. Yeah. You got to give God praise when you're doing well. Yeah. You got to give God praise when you're not doing so good. You got to learn to give God praise for what he's doing. But not only what he's doing, not only for what he has done, but you got to give him praise for what he is yet to do. Yeah, yeah. And the 
the jailer yeah. leads Paul and Silas to his house. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know this God y'all praying to, uh -huh. but God knows I want you to introduce me to him. I, know that, I want to know something about him. Yeah. While most preachers and people think the exciting thing is the earthquake. Now that ain't the earthquake is not the most exciting thing in the for me. The most exciting thing is that they refuse to allow fire to put out their praise. They refuse to allow their circumstance. They refuse to allow their situation to hinder them from having their hands. They begin to give God praise and just name him a sanctified imagination.
are in need of prayer, in need of a closer walk with God. We thank you for the power of praise yeah. that has gone forth at Lee's Chapel this week uh, already, even on day two of a new week. I thank God for the testimonies of, of those such as Sister Eunice Johnson, who is uh, out of the hospital and is recovering at home and doing well. And as of today, I thank God for hearing the voice of Sister Gerald Stoops as she celebrates another birthday. And as uh, her soul and her body seeks to be revived, I thank God for the praise in those voices of those. Yeah like the preacher who knows the power of praise. And I thank God for Reverend uh, Myers, who uh, even with the death of a granddaughter, knew the power of praise. Yes. Thanking God for the life of one she loved. And I pray tonight that you do the same. Yeah. That you will praise God. Keep praising. Let us pray. Gracious and all wise God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for this another opportunity to call upon your holy and righteous name. We thank you for the text tonight in Acts 16 that invited us to take a glimpse at Paul and Silas and their praise and singing, their prayers, their testimony of uh, just how praise matters. Oh God, I pray tonight that if there's someone amongst us that does not know you, that they will come to do so and make that decision even as the jailer did. Lord, I pray right now that you will touch someone who was feeling discouraged or felt like their breakthrough wasn't here. Yet, God, you showed up on time. Lord, I pray that you would give them uh, the, the, the insight, give them the, 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 the fire to keep praising you despite their circumstance. Oh God, I thank you for this preacher tonight. I pray that all that he has poured out, you will replenish him. That you will anoint him afresh. That on tomorrow and the next night, that he will again be able to proclaim your truth. Yes. Oh God, I pray that your word has fallen on good ground. Yes. Oh Lord, bless those who said, pray for me. Bless those who didn't even know to call on your name. And we stand in the gap for them, oh God. Lord, right now, we ask that you will bless every home, bless every family, bless even the St. Stephen family as they uh, pray with and support their pastor. Oh, God, thank you for these chapel family and friends. Be with us, we pray. It's in the mighty name of Jesus. Let all God's children say, Amen. 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 Well, beloved, we have worshiped. From the Lord. And we invite you to continue to worship with us the next couple nights. We'll be back here at 7 o'clock tomorrow night, Tuesday night, 24th, and on Wednesday at 7 o'clock as well. We invite you to come and not just you, invite somebody else to join you. And let us worship the Lord. And on Wednesday, those of you who are in the area, please make your way to Lee's Chapel in the parking lot that we will praise God from whom all blessings flow. Yes. At this time, let us do just that as we go down from the mountain, but we'll be back up again in the yes. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. And we'll